Hi everyone. Before we start talking about the new features, there's a little disclaimer. This update has quite a few features that are just for Prime members. So of course, normal members can't use those features. And I'm one of those normal members. So I can only navigate you through the features that I can access. Now that we're clear about it, let's get into today's topic. The first feature we're going to talk about is the transform tool. The newly added features in the transform tool section are super helpful. First, I'm going to go to the hair layer for demonstration. Now if we click on the transform tool, we can see different new options. First, translation X and Y and then zoom and angle. Using these parameters, we can change the position of any element with more precision. The translation X will help you to move things side to side and then translation Y will help you to move things up and down. Next up zoom and angle options which are pretty easy to use as well. You can make really small changes by using these parameters. Before the new update, we could only move things manually which was not really precise. So this is a great new addition I must say. Another really helpful thing they have added is that we can move the entire canvas instead of a specific layer. We just have to change the target from current layer to canvas. So now we can move entire thing not just a specific layer next I'm going to talk about some more new features of the transform tool this time we're going to talk about the perspective form first I'm going to draw a quick random square and then I'm going to click on the transform tool Then I'm going to click on the perspective form and you can see there are many options we are going to choose the horizon now you can see there are repeated squares all over the canvas now you can just pull on the small square to create a background with perspective you can create really cool patterns just by moving it a little bit now if we click on the option full then you will be able to see a complete 360 degree of background instead of just being limited to the horizon now it looks like he is standing in the middle of some kind of funky passage which is pretty cool in my eyes so this is just a very basic example if you use your imagination you can actually create really cool stuff for your background Now we will be moving on to the next segment that is color range. First click on the selection tool from the top right corner and then select color range. Then from the menu we have several reference points that we can move. Now I am going to just change the green highlighted area of the hair. So I'm going to place the reference points on those areas. It basically selects the color with same hue in the whole canvas. After deciding on the parts that you want to change the color, then click on show selection. When you turn it on, you will be able to see only the selected areas in the canvas. The option fuzziness and range will help you understanding which part exactly do you want to be selected. And after you are done with it, click on the OK button. And then we can just change the hue of the selected area. As you can see, I am successfully changing the color of the green part and it's more or less precise. I think it is a very handy option 
because you don't really have to use a lot of time if you suddenly want to change the color of a certain part. To remove the selection, you can just go to the selection layer and click on this square button right there to remove it. Now we are going to talk about the next new feature that is the background texture. To change the background texture, we just simply need to click on the far right option from the background section. There are a whole lot of background textures that you can see from the list. But unfortunately, as a normal user, I can only choose the canvas texture. I have two complaints about this new feature. First of all, we cannot really change the size of the grain. And secondly, it is making my art look really dark. And I also think that they could have given us, the normal users, some more options, at least five free canvas textures that we can apply. So anyways, if I really want to change the texture of the entire canvas, I would rather choose some texture from the material pattern option. So I don't really know how useful this new feature is going to be. But I can't judge it because I cannot really use the rest of the options. The next new feature we're going to talk about is the eyedropper tool. We have a square right here. And next up I'm going to take a new layer on top of this layer. And then change the blending mode from normal to overlay. Now I'm going to add a yellow square over the blue one. As you can see a green color has been produced because of the overlay effect. So when you color pick you can only choose the green option not the actual yellow color from the current layer. Now comes the new option from the eyedropper tool. So when you click on it you will be able to see two options canvas and a current layer. If we change the option to current layer, we will be able to choose the actual yellow color of that current layer. But always remember that you can only use this when you click on the eyedropper tool. Otherwise, when you just color pick in general, you won't be able to do that, even if the option is set for current layer. Moving on to the next new feature that is bevel. This bevel tool used to be already there but now there are two more options bevel inner and outer. First we will be taking a look at bevel outer. So when we click on this option you will be able to see an outline that makes the square look three dimensional can change the position of the light source as you wish and also you can change the color of that three-dimensional area as you wish and also if you change the environmental color to purple which is our current background layer you will be able to make it look more realistic next up we have bevel inner it is almost similar to bevel outer but three-dimensional effect will happen inside the square instead of outside of it. All the parameters are similar to the bevel outer just the effect happens inside so I'm sure you can understand what is going on here. This bevel tool is really great to add a quick 3D effect to any object. Finally, we have came to the last new feature that is cloud storage. They have now given us an option where we will be able to synchronize our artworks to keep it safe. So if you change your device or delete the data or you are low on storage, you will be able to retrieve 
all the data from the cloud storage. But there is a huge but. If you are a normal user like me, you will be able to only use 64 MB cloud storage. But the Prime members will have the privilege to use 20 GB cloud storage, which is pretty huge. This 64 MB space is really not useful to me because most of my artworks are more than 100 MB because I use a lot of layers. So none of my arts could be synchronized except for the current one that I was showing you for demonstration. Because the size of this particular artwork is super low. So you can see that it says it has been synchronized. But if I show you another artwork of mine, you can see that it says waiting synchronization. This is one of my artworks which has over 20 layers and as you can see it is 125 MB. So this option is not really useful for me. I really wish we at least had 500 MB to 1 GB as a free user but it's okay. One thing I felt from this new update that they really want us to get their prime membership this is a heavily biased update there are some new features which i think should be accessible for everyone but sadly we can't do that so i can't help but be a little bit disappointed here with that said i hope this video was helpful and informative for you thank you for watching and i'll see you in the next one Till then, take care.